Hey, party people. Happy Friday. Hey, 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 listen. My Christian friends, do me a favor. Make it a, a goal for 2024. Make it a priority to read your Bible. Read your Bible cover to cover. Like, start in the first, start in Genesis and read 10 chapters a day. Let's try to finish the Bible this year. You have to read the Bible because so many of y'all have just been so totally deceived. And it's because, and I know it's only because you don't read your Bible. You do not read your Bible. And so you, you somehow, you, you think the Bible is all about how you feel. It's about feelings and, you know, all you got to do is love and everything is, that's it. Just because you so easily when deceived, that's it. You and it's only because you haven't read your Bible. If you read your Bible, you can't be deceived because it, you won't be deceived if you follow and read the Bible. The words are there. Tell you what it says. See, a lot of people, what they do is either they they learn this from somebody because it has to be because they all anytime they're wrong about something, they always have the exact same answer. Like they always have exact the exact same answer because. Somebody showed them or told them something and they all just kind of follow behind it. Because they take scripture out of context and then they make the scripture say whatever it is that they feel like making it say. Whatever they feel like saying. And and that's so wrong. Like, you just can't take scripture out of context. Can't take it. In, like, okay, let's say for example. Can't take anything. I'm going to just show you an example of how, what it's like if you take something out of context. Let's say you heard me say, I'm going to the bank. Okay. So if you even say I'm going to the bank, you you probably or maybe thinking, oh, she must be going to Wells Fargo. She must be going to PNC. She must be going to Chase. You know that type of thing because you don't know the context in which I said I'm going to the bank. So then you just make up something from your experience, your memories, somebody what somebody said, um, how you feel. So you make that up. But if let's. You know, let's say, okay, let's say you heard my conversation and I said, oh, you know what? I went to, I was online and I looked in my bank account and they, uh, my bank is like $1,200 short. My, my account is $1,200 short. So I got to go to the, I'm going to the bank to get this cleared up. Now you heard the context in which I said this. So now when you hear me say I'm going to the bank, you know what I'm saying. But if you just heard me say I'm going to the bank and let's say the context was I'm on a beach I'm out with my friends and then my I'm get up and I'm like listen I'm gonna run I'm gonna go down um I'm gonna go closer to the water and my friend said oh you're getting in the water I said no I'm not going to work what I'm just I'm going to the bank I mean I'm going to the bank of the river like I'm not going there I'm going to the bank but you just heard me say I'm going to the bank so you don't know the context that I'm making that statement does that make sense but most people they take stuff out of context like, and then they make up in their mind what they think it's going to say. Like, I, I was having a discussion with this guy, and um, he was saying that, see, a lot of people convinced that Jesus is God the Father here, you know, living on, came to earth. But the Bible never tells us that. And there, and every single one of them use the exact same scripture to consider backing themselves up where it says in the beginning was the word and the word was with God and the word was God so then they'll go see it says right there that Jesus is, is God okay where do you see the word where do you see where it says Jesus is God they said well the word be, the, um, Jesus was the was the word yes but where did it say Jesus, that it said the word was, that Jesus was God it said the word was God because the word is what came and became flesh that's what the Bible tells us we're not without making up anything the Bible said, and the word became flesh. And we do know that Jesus, I don't say Jesus in quotes because I like to call him by his real name. Well, I call him by his real name. A lot of people be offended somehow. So Jesus uh, was the word made flesh. So the word was with God. The word was what was a part of God. The same way the Holy Spirit is a part of God. Holy Spirit is not God. The Holy Spirit is a part of God that, you know what's funny? The Holy Spirit was in every prophet. God would send the Holy Spirit to, down to be in every prophet. Then after Jesus came, the Holy Spirit became available for all of us. 
But are we all God? I'm not saying that. Is it, are we all God the Father? Are we? No, you don't get that part confused. But because the word, uh, Jesus was the only one who was the, had the Holy Spirit and the word. He was the son of God. But when you take things out of context and make it say whatever you want it to say and be strong in your conviction because you haven't read the Bible, because it's the only, the only way you keep getting fooled is because you don't read the Bible. If you read the Bible, read it, read it. You know what? You say you love God, but you don't read his word. It, it, that, that just doesn't make sense to me because if you love God you would love the word you would love to hear what he was saying what he how he went how he wants you to live and people who say oh you know the law is done away with there's no laws which makes no sense which means there's no sin if there's no laws there's no sin so that makes absolutely no sense but they are thoroughly convinced that there is no laws and they convinced that there are still laws they believe that those laws are not for Christians those laws are just for Israel and some people even more confused they say those laws are just for Jewish people so you know like uh, those Jewish people are not Israel they're not God's chosen people but anyway people um you know they 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 and they know what back they back it up with they back it up with uh Peter saying to to uh, people about oh it doesn't matter what days what 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 a person eats or what what holy days they celebrate or you know none of that matters see they take the whole thing out of context Peter was talking to new converts his whole thing was it didn't matter at that time well if you know the, if you read this read the story the people are Israel, some Israel, like I said, visited the church. He was talking to a particular church. Some people had visited, and they were and they were telling them things that they hadn't learned yet. Like you got about holy days and about you know certain things that 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 is part of part of Israel, being part of Israelite. And the people were confused about it, so it was causing friction. And so he was like, "Don't worry about." What a, what a person eats. If this person eats this and this person eats that, you know, don't worry about it. If you if you read the whole thing, these are new converts. He's he's saying to, from the beginning that you have to feed them milk. Um, yeah, milk. And then later on they'll get to meat. So basically, he was trying not to get them to have the water hose effect. You know, like turn the fire hydrant on and drink water because it's like whoa, too much, too much at one time. So he wasn't saying. When, you know, forget all the Lord. Now he, they did. He, he went to the congregation, to the, to the, to the other apostles, and they, and he told them what he was doing. He was saying that he was going to focus on that. He was going to focus on certain things. You know, going to tell them not to fornicate, not to do this. But basically, and he, and he basically was saying like, when they go to the synagogue on Saturday, the Sabbath, and they hear the others, that's when they could learn those things gradually. You start people off on milk, and then you, you then later on graduate to the meat it's like a baby a baby coming to the world you give a baby a bottle that you're not and, and, and it's been a long time since i had a baby i think it's like four to six months before you start giving them solid food you don't start the baby off the first day they born feeding them a steak it, you know he doesn't have teeth so he can't even bite into the steak so that's basically what he's saying like it's, it's too much for people to, to give them all this stuff at one time this is for Israelite that was their custom they were that's how they were they were born into it so they it was something that happened with for them for, from the beginning so it was so they may have understood it a lot better than the new converts so they was explaining it in a way let's you know let's slow it down and, and, and let's say that that's all wrong but Peter don't have authority over God to tell us that we don't have to do these things no more both God and his son Jesus said he do Jesus came so that the laws you know what the new covenant if you don't know the new covenant is that the laws are written in our hearts and in our minds so if they were done away with what, what, what's the new covenant what's the, what do you think the new covenant is it's that the laws are now written in our hearts and in our minds and the Holy Spirit comes and resides inside of us so that we can so that it can teach us these things and bring all these things to remembrance. So we don't have to uh, rely on word of mouth passing down history from history. It's in our hearts. We're born with it. 
we, we it, once we are saved, we are the Holy Spirit comes. It's, but you know what? A lot of saved people don't know anything about the Holy Spirit. They don't have the Holy Spirit. You have to have the Holy Spirit so the Holy Spirit can teach you these things. Once you read the Bible, and when you read the Bible, you can you you know talk to the Holy Spirit and have the Holy Spirit teach you how to discern, how to comprehend what the Bible is saying. So people, let me tell you, in 2024, please, if you love God, make it a goal that you read his word and understand his word and stop being confused and deceived. Have a blessed day.